Nuggets Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. You think you and your Hall of Fame quarterback buddy like football? Well, John Gruden and Brett Favre don't just like football. They f- love it. It's red left switch. C right. Sprint right G. U corner. Halfback flat. Nice That's and easy. Lot. Let's walk it. Here we go. Football. Football, yeah. 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 Football. Yeah. Football. Yeah. Get some. Eat. <laughs> that would be, I quit football in like seventh or eighth grade because there was just too much running involved. So I went to go play baseball instead. Like remembering the play calls would be the hardest thing. Like if you're a quarterback and you get to the NFL, it takes like a half hour to spit out a play. You know? Yep. It's very intimidating. Yes. Our plays in seventh grade were like right sweep, right. Pass left. <laughs> that's very. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Dive yeah, I, middle. I tried out for a guard on the first day of football, and they cut me. It was the weirdest damn thing. Yeah. Wait, you, you were, tried out? You what, were a what, guard. I, it what was on? a joke. I I did not oh. do that. Oh, okay. uh, I was gonna say if you identified that. yourself as no. a guard, I I no. went to I think it was before junior sophomore junior year at Benilde. I went to one captain's practice on an August morning. Or oh, late wow. July, and we ran and ran and ran, and mm-hmm. I got home and told my mom, "Well, that's done. <laughs> <laughs> no water break." Because like back in the day, because like I, you know, big kid, they're, they're like, "You should come out for football; it'd be great." And all they do is all they did for the captain's practice was basically run. Yeah, I'm like just, this is yeah. ridiculous. You know, there's gonna be running involved. This field is how long? Is at that ridiculous. time, football! we're not good. Oh, yeah! I was going to say, Declan at guard, and then he turns sideways, and they're like, where'd our guard Whoa, go? where'd he go? Yeah. I don't know. What happened? Where'd he go? You know what, Scary? You still would have been better than Dakota Dozier was. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> you could well, have at least okay. fallen over yeah. and made someone jump over you, I guess, or to tripped. get to Kirk Cousins. No, the, yeah. no. Declan could have tripped him. <laughs> so this is Purple Daily. Mackie Judd, executive producer Declan, presented by TCL. Enjoy more of what you love with TCL. And uh, also, we appreciate everyone who has checked out the new Score North app, central hub for everything we do at Score North. You can find daily videos and episodes of Purple Daily, Judd's written work, and you can send messages to us in video form, photos, or just quick messages through the feedback tab. So check it out. Let us know what you think. And speaking of feedback, every week we dive into your comments and questions from the Purple Daily YouTube page, the good, the bad, um, the ugly, I guess. So let's start out here, boys. With Tyler Haar's question, your guys' take on Bashad Breland being the likely starter over Cam Dantzler is hot, steamy poo. Dantzler had a higher PFF grade than Breland as a rookie, and Dantzler has much better upside than Breland. No way Dantzler isn't one of the starting corners. Love the show. Much love, nerds. Uh, thank hmm. you. Thank you, Tyler. We can, we can, all, we can disagree and disagree respectfully here. So, all right, are we, I think all of us kind of agree that Bashad Breeland was brought in and probably told, you got a really good shot at being, and, and you know, Patrick Peterson, by the way, had a worse PFF grade than both of the guys that we're talking about. But I just think there's no way you give Pat Pete like eight or 10 million to come off the bench. And I don't think there's any way you bring Bashad Breeland in and give him potentially four million to come off the bench. So um, I think Breeland would have to have a really bad off season and preseason to not get the starting job. But what do you guys think? I think after what the Vikings and Zimmer in particular saw last season, there's concern about Dantzler staying healthy, which he struggled to do in 2020. He is going into his second year, but the reliance on young corners last year backfired big time. Um, There are some coaches where I would agree that that, Breland was a long shot to start, but I think he signed here because Zim said, I like veterans. I like guys who have played and I like guys that I think that I can count on to play. So I agree with the point made if this is a different coach, but it's not. And I think Dantzler has a future here. I think he could be a fine player. Breland though was signed to a contract that is going to pay him up to $4 million. And he was clearly, you know, he was, he was, low-balled initially, came back, they offered him more, and he made it very clear that he was told, you are competing for a starting job. I don't think it's a hot take when you can put the pieces of the puzzle together as much as we can about what Breeland was told. And so I will not be surprised one bit if your week one outside starting corners are Pat P, 
and Bashad Breeland. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Dex? I was going to say, I mean, I guess it's just assuming, obviously, Patrick Peterson's going to be the other. Like, he's locked in, right? It's more it's more of a lock that Pat P is locked in as a starting cornerback. Yeah. And then the other debate is between Cam Dantzler and Breeland. Yep. I, I would probably lean towards Dantzler. He's younger. He's probably a little quicker. But this is a good thing. That's why the Vikings made a priority of getting all these cornerbacks and also Mackenzie Alexander in the fold. This is this is a good problem to have. Finally, for the for the first time, what it seems like in the last three or four years that the Vikings actually have legitimate depth and good players at cornerback like they did in 2017. I would probably prefer Dantzler over Breland, but I'm not also going to lose sleep over it. Yeah, these are definitely first world problems for the first time in a, in a couple of years. <laughs> All right, Zachary Pierce with some some kind words here on the Purple Daily YouTube comment section. I love your takes, Judd, way better than a toaster. So well, I appreciate that, Zachary. Thank you very yeah. much. Last week, someone said that we could just replace Judd with a toaster. I guess you'd turn the toaster sort of sideways so it looks like a face. Yeah, and that, that and it started a big. De- it started a debate as well because and there were people that agreed bathtub. agreed with the toaster. There were people that didn't agree. Yeah. Like I, I just want more than a toaster. Yeah. It doesn't well, have to be like a souffle pan or something. Sure, yeah. <laughs> you know, That's something fair. with a little pizzazz to it. Toaster is very just functional. Yeah, toaster okay. oven, toaster oven. Uh, he continues. All you guys do a great job, and you tell it like it is. You don't give a bleep about. The Homer's drinking Kool-Aid and the Kirk groupies bashing you guys. You stick to your guns. Um, we love Kirk groupies, though. We're, we're, there's room for all of us here in the Purple Daily community. Hunter K adds, Judd looking younger with the fresh cut this week. Purple Daily keeps moving up. Did you get you I, got the little like the fresh beard cut this week? Yeah, I got it last week, right? I think I got it last Friday. Nice. I got the haircut and the beard trimmed up. And I now have decided as long as i keep the beard i'm going back every two weeks to get it trimmed professionally i just can't do it when i try myself you know i got a scissors i take out and try and trim it away it's dangerous it doesn't work out well well i mean i don't come close to hurting myself but it also is a bad look so i've (laughs) decided that i'm gonna get my hair cut basically once a month or so that's like but every two weeks i think i'm going for the professional beard trim because i just like it more what needs to happen for Declan to grow some sort of a Vikings like playoff or Super Bowl beard I, where you don't shave no, until the Vikings? I'm telling you, cr- Phil, Declan, forget the beard idea. He needs to grow the porn stash because he can no. grow the porn stash. It would be so great to see it. He's got no chance to grow a beard. Kudos, kudos to our old friend Matthew Collar who told me a few years ago, like, you got to just because I used to rock like a little chin thing and somebody's like, you got to shave that. Like, it actually, like, you already look young. Like, hey, everybody. Fun. Well, you look like a predator with Judd's that. Hockey Show. Uh, Let's talk about Dollar Victor Dollar Bill S. Kirill. Dollar Kirill, yeah. Um, hey. No, I got, I, I got I my can't. mirrors on the ceiling. I got my strobe light out. I shave I shave my cat whiskers off my face every other day. That's literally what I do. <laughs> I, I would like to see you grow the and stash. I just shave it off. Grow the stash. No. Can we see it? Zero grow chance. Grow the stash. Grow Zero chance. Grow the stash. stash. Grow, grow the, the stash. stash. All right. You can get out from underneath the, uh, the the various horse bets that people want to implement if you that agree a... to grow a weird porn stash until the oh, Vikings clinch a playoff spot. Is death another option? Can, um, can no. I? No. <laughs> grow the stash. <laughs> oh, God. Those are two things that I don't like. Uh, don't DMN know. 1447 says, this channel is just speculative jokery. Mm. We take that as a high compliment. Thank you. We, thank That's you for exactly. that. Yeah, of course we are. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Stoneweight 2018. What happens if the Vikings pay Daniil Hunter and he comes back and is a shell of himself and the Vikings wind up having a massive dead cap hit for a player that's washed up? I find Hunter's behavior extremely suspect and it, sug- uh, it suggests to me that both him and his agent want to secure a huge extension before it becomes apparent that he's not the same player. It's part of the problem, right? Like I mean, that's the chance yeah. that that that's why your doctors have to be good because yeah that's a that's that's what the Vikings are going to say and what Daniel is going to say is okay that's fine I'm not going to show up good luck rushing the passer. It's not something I'm ignoring, but it, it's the neck injury to me is it's low on the totem pole right now. Like I I oh, still wow. think he's fine, and I know Judd is scared of neck injuries, and other people should be rightfully so. It's a it's a bleeping neck, but I I'm I'm not too concerned with the injury. I'm really not. Well, your guy Edge know. came back. It took him nine years, but he it came back nine years, and he won the championship. Oh, God, man. I love that pop. It's one of the best pops. Ever. I, it's, I, I don't disagree with this angst. I mean, this is yeah. the core. This is the biggest thing for the Vikings right now. I mean, 
you know, there's other things like, do they have a second pass rusher? And are they going to be able to get more out of Pat Pete than the Cardinals did the last couple of years? There's all these things and questions, but this is the biggest one by far. And there really is no answer to it right now. That what if question is, is the risk that they have to weigh in trying to make Daniel Hunter happy and, uh, and get him back in the mix here. Uh, Violet Valkyrie says, at this point, anything short of an NFC championship and a Super Bowl appearance is unacceptable. If they can't do that, then I'd rather see them suck so that we have to hit reset and get an offensive-minded head coach. Um, Do you agree with sort of a Super Bowl or bust outcome or mentality for the Vikings this year? I sort of do, and I think the team does too, right? I don't think that you remake your defense and get guys back Um, as much as they have to not take a shot. I mean, Kirk technically could be going, I mean, Kirk could be in his last year here if he's traded after next season, if they can find someone to take that salary cap hit and they think Kellen Mond has developed. So yeah, I don't disagree, but this comes back to the last point about Hunter. And are you going to go into a Super Bowl season gambling that you can find a replacement for a guy who wants a new contract, Mm -hmm. but who there is concern about. This is where Hunter sort of has them because I mean, you've done all of this work and you have remade your secondary uh, bar is back with Kendricks. Now you have remade your defensive tackles, which is fantastic. Your offense should be good offensive line remade. And now you have two glaring holes. If Hunter's not here, left end and right end. Yeah. So that's where he could that's where he's got the ability to say okay guys, I don't show up. Good luck. Best of luck to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think well t- to to the greater point here and this is exactly where they were last year, being in the middle is a really tough spot because you don't get your pick of a top 5 player or a bona fide franchise quarterback option, right? If you if you're going to move on from Kirk's contract. Um also I think the the Vikings organization and fans like Everyone takes pride in the Vikings always being competitive. It's just a it's a it's a weird feeling once every ten to fifteen years when the Vikings are like a three or a four win disaster because it doesn't happen very often. Even the the train wrecky years like last year, they sort of recover in the second half of the season and they bounce back to be more of a five hundred team. So um, I, I'm with Violet on this though that it's time. You've got your coach has been here for the better part of a decade. Your quarterback's in his prime. You got weapons. You improve the defense. You know, if w- why can't they be contenders? Why why can't that be the bar that we set and the pressure that we put on this organization? Make it happen. They, Get back to the NFC Championship game. They need to start that by winning the division. I think it's that. I mean, if, if the Packers are going to be as big a mess as we think that they might be, there is no reason why the 2021 Vikings cannot win the the division, there's no, you know what? Win out of 17 games, win 13, win 14, um, because that's what's going to get you there. But yeah, there, there, there is no, I mean, you tell me what, what's the rebuild here where you're like, yeah, the team is good now, but wait till 2022. No, this is it. It doesn't exist. It's it. Yeah, this should, this should be it. It's it. Doesn't it's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Make it happen. Um, yeah, and I would say there really is no insurance policy for 2022. It's all or nothing. Yeah. But if you're a business owner, there's always an insurance policy with Federated that can help you, give you peace of mind, risk management tools. You know, it's it's sort of severe weather season now in the Twin Cities, too. And so severe weather, electrical outages, they can interrupt your business by disrupting computer systems, machinery, phone systems, even security systems. You can find out at federatedinsurance.com resources in risk management when it comes to weather emergencies. They got all kinds of stuff for you to uh, to, to use for your company. So federatedinsurance.com. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. <laughs> all right, next, uh, next comment from YouTube here. A ton of positive reaction from the Realistic Randy crossover episode nice. that we did a few days ago. We probably had 100 or more comments specifically. I'll read a few of them here. Uh, David Woodson, love this crossover. Two of my three favorite podcasts. Jamie K, this is a purple daily dream come true. I would love you guys and Realistic Randy. I love you guys and Realistic Randy is the best Vikings vlogger on YouTube. Uh, Jesse says, this is a crossover I didn't know I needed. (laughs) Saints, 56789, Realistic Randy is the man. In my personal opinion, he fits right in with the brand and image of Score North. 
and I would love if he was a frequent contributor. This is kind of the funny thing about the last year for us, and that a lot of you guys who have who have jumped into the Purple Daily community have discovered us within like the last year, or maybe you listened to Collar when he was the driving host of it a couple years ago. Um, but I would say only a smaller percentage of people go back to like the origins of Vikings Ventline. So Judd and I and superstar Mike Morris, we used to do a post-game radio show on 1500 ESPN, Vikings Ventline, and that's the origin of the YouTube version that you see now the last year. And we would be, we were, we did it one year from the lookout bar in Maple Grove in like right. 2014. And it was, it was a, a post game radio call in show. And realistic Randy, Randy in Oakland was his original moniker, was one of the OG weekly callers on that show. Yep. Going back like seven years ago. And so he, and, and he was a caller, I think, into Mackie and Judd too at times. So he, and, and he did some YouTube videos for us uh, a couple of years ago on score. But yeah, he, he was a regular. And we would interact with him on a regular basis, so it's cool to see that he's built his own YouTube channel. And uh, maybe we will do some more collaborations with with our guy. Perfect. Who are, like, who are some of the – like, when we go back to the origins of Vikings Ventline, Linda in Wyoming. Yep. Yep. Realistic Randy. Uh, ben in Oregon? Florida goes way back. Someone Otis. Right. Otis in Vegas. Oh, he, he was great. Bob in Pennsylvania, who yep. who's still uh, part of the YouTube. Otis version. in Vegas was legendary, man. Hot tub Bob. So much fun. Yeah, yeah. We should have like a Mount Rushmore of our of the <laughs> o, the OG like the, the 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 callers who just brought it on a weekly basis. So that was fun. Um, Colton Nesland says Declan would make an excellent UFC cage fighter. Really, for the like for the ultra featherweight division, like what would what. I don't think I'd do very well there. Would I would you make a die? great. I would be dead. Have you ever yeah. been in a fight before? No, no, never? no, 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 no. Never in your life. Before. No. Like on no, the schoolyard, no. recess, playground. Have you ever been? Have you ever no. been punched before? Yes, I have been punched before. Yes. Did you punch back? Uh no, I did not. Wait, so you never not. got in a fight with your brother? I mean, no. Like we, no, no, not really. Like we would, we would, we were huge wrestling nerds. We would do wrestling moves on each other all the time. Stone Cold Stunners. No, but I mean, you never got mad and like got in a fist fight. No. What led to you getting punched? Uh, uh, someone punched me one time in 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 band class in seventh grade. Band class. One time in band 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 class class got physical. Band class class got physical. What'd you do? I, I, it's a long story. I really don't want to share. Did you podcast, steal a guy's honest. trumpet solo or something? I what wish happened? that was. The, I honestly wish that was and the case. Wait, no. So I he, punched someone one time for stealing my trumpet solo. Clomp on my trumpet solo. I bet. I Did bet. he knock you down? So no, when you got I just punched? wore a punch. I just wore a punch and <laughs> you just picked up and your And you trombone. just took yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I just took it. All right. That's not how the. That's not how it works. You no. gotta punch back. I mean, no, even like even when I, I mean, resistance. number number I, like. The, I was a smaller dude, obviously, growing up, but sure. I obviously always surrounded myself was. with bigger dudes. So small it, guys fight. Small guys uh, fight all the time. Scrappy. Mass Phil. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I usually had buddies who backed me up. Like one time, a dude tried to get in my face, and I oh. remember another dude got right back at him and I said, was, "If you mess with me, I was that me. guy for my friends." Yeah, yeah. I, I was, carried their water far too yeah. often. Yeah, yeah. It bores me now. I can't uh, somebody I else that. here, MN Jalo says, so weird watching the third guy on the left that never talks and hardly appears to be paying attention. <laughs> That's not true. Declan talks a lot. I, I mean, he captures and then, it. And then, and then he you, captures you left it out the him. other part? He said he <laughs> talks a lot and he hardly pays attention. So we are, we are acknowledging <laughs> yeah, the fact that I don't work. pay attention. Is yeah. that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Well, you're not paying attention sometimes because you're doing different chores, different work for your. I, exact, I am. Exact, I am doing, doing a lot of things role. at the same time. Like you it put yourself really on true. sometimes, and you're doing other stuff. Just yeah. so you guys know, yeah. the third guy on the left, his name is Declan. He is our executive executive producer at yeah. Score North, and we and so we produce for for video, for podcasts, and we produce for radio too. So he is the Swiss Army knife ninja that is taking everything we do and making sure it gets out to the channels that we need it to go to. And sometimes he just gets bored because we're boring too. I don't know, like you know, listening to us blab all day. I'd well, probably fade like out once in a while that. too. He's got like five jobs, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I won't. I won't and he's training more. to be a UFC cage fighter. And so he's shooting, yeah, does to be a cage fighter as well. So that's also happening. And maybe like riding it. a horse one day. Peter Voler says, "I'm scared that Jordan Love is going to be the next Pat Mahomes. I may stop watching football if that happens. Have we considered that that they may have nailed a third Hall of Fame quarterback here in Green Bay?" Nope. No way. 
just just a hard. Note. They got excited because he, he went from a bad OTA this week to a good one. And they were literally like, it was unbelievable what he, it's OTAs. They don't tackle. They don't do anything. By like, the you way. Can't, sorry. No, I was, no, was going to say, um, Go ahead. this came across Twitter feed just about 15 minutes ago, but Rob Domofsky and Rich Eisen today. Decent chance that Aaron Rodgers sits this season and the Packers trade him in 2022 for the sake of better draft capital. Yeah. Decent chance. He's going to sit out. Yeah. No, and, or but, not. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm getting really tired of Rodgers' former teammates like James Jones claiming they talked to him and that, oh, man, he might come back here. Just stop with it. Like Phil said, this is the most vindictive human being ever, probably. Think about what it would take. Now, I know there's a lot of extreme circumstances where people, like, are estranged from their families, but think what it would take yeah, for you I, to never speak to your parents or siblings again. That's Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Yep. He doesn't give a rip about Brian Gutekunst and that relationship well, or he, any he, of his teammates for right. that matter. He's a sociopath who was just sent down to throw touchdown passes. Uh, speaking of, <laughs> speaking of, it was like a sci fi movie. Speaking of, Dennis T. on Kirk Cousins, uh, he says, uh, Kirk Cousins has consistently shown that he will not take any constructive criticism and has always responded with an excuse for his poor play. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, he gets a little, he ruffles a little bit, but but Raymond then says, Kirk needs a couple of cocktails to loosen up. What do you guys think Kirk would be like after like four Manhattans? What, do you, what kind of a drunk do you think Kirk Cousins is? Oh, That's a great question. Dad jokes? Count. I bet dad, he gets dad. super super chill and happy and yeah yeah like dad jokes guy dad jokes that that would be my guess seems like a guy too that would love to talk about the glory days and, and reliving all of his all of his past highs in high school and college and stuff he seems like that kind of I like drunk. that I can see that yeah. I can see that he might he might be slightly more fun drunk than sober though because uh, he's yeah. because he's he strikes me seem, as being very uptight about life yeah. he doesn't seem fun sober no straight up he doesn't. yeah I think I think he's the type of dude like once you get about three stiff drinks in him you know he he might even sing some care i bet he sings karaoke when he's i bet you oh he, yeah he, he wouldn't want oh, to get up there and embarrass the himself days. but after yeah but yeah, after like three the, the musical yeah. days oh yeah sure. yeah no pretty that's a woman. great call yeah yeah right. hey, oh pretty woman <laughs> man they should they should play that as their instead of like the vikings uh what's that song they play the um Oh my God! The winter song that they play coming in for their introductions—they should just replace that with Kirk Acapella, "Pretty Woman," to pump them up before games. I like it, so, especially if they have a losing record in the second half of the season. All right, those are uh, your comments and questions from the Purple Daily YouTube page. Keep them coming. We'll uh, we'll do this every single week, good, bad, whatever. We can take it. We're Teflon here on this show. My feelings are hurt. <laughs> Toaster, um, yeah. some other comments. Your feelings about me. are hurt. Your My feelings, feelings are hurt. hurt. I got I got called out for mustache. I got called out for work ethic. Well, you should grow a mustache. Here. You should grow a mustache. And I am very sensitive. Yeah. And by the way, people don't realize that. Ventline returns this Sunday too. So we'll have a full we'll have three guests this Sunday night on Ventline. So be sure to tune into that. Awesome. Awesome. All Speaking right. Speaking of my work ethic. Good stuff today, guys. Good stuff. <laughs> we appreciate you hanging out with us here on Purple Daily. We'll catch you guys next time.